Welcome back. Well, a new year means a new segment. We're very excited to debut our Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort Water Cooler Talk. It is a chance for us to chat as if we were on break at the water cooler. Typical office chatter here at Midco SN. Essentially, if you put a camera by our cubicles, this is what you would hear just about every day. So I am joined by Jay Elson and we are going to talk coyote hoops because the USD women had a big win last night in mm -hmm. Fargo, a place that they have struggled to play the last few years. I know about that, but the key in this one, Jay, in a good way would have to be the turnovers. Well, first off, the USD women are not the only South Dakota team that struggles in Fargo, right? It, it's just a tough place to go and play. But in terms of those turnovers, you're absolutely right. This was the hugest part of this game last night. The Bison turned it over 22 times. Mm -hmm. Kyle's turned that into 32 points. They had 11 turnovers and 18 points off turnovers just in the first quarter mm -hmm. alone uh, the other night. And, and so USD pretty good at this so far this season. It's been a point of emphasis for them as they've uh, since the beginning of the year. They've, they're taking it away about 18 times per game. That's second best in the Summit League behind Western Illinois. And certainly that's a stat that's going to serve them well going forward. But this last night, North Dakota State made it a game when it when USD really could have rid, uh, run away and hidden with it. Uh, so you got to credit them for that. But ultimately, the biggest difference in this game was turnovers. And that's going to be, you know, it certainly could be a theme for the season uh, if they continue to take it away as they have to this point. Well, that's huge, especially the beginning of conference play, because all of last year we go down to Vermilion, talk to Don Flitz, who I had every Monday, and she mm -hmm. said, we really need to be better on defense. She wants her team to play aggressive, do not foul. Mm -hmm. And they're really doing that. So she's got to be happy with that. Absolutely. But moving uh, on to the offensive end, because defense was great up in Fargo last night, but the offense for USD was outstanding as well, especially from deep range. Yeah, absolutely, and this team has got some shooters. They haven't shot it particularly well from the perimeter to this point, just 34% as a team, fourth best in the Summit League, and that's after what they did last night. They were 13 of 27 from the arc, 48% in that game. But they were feeling it early, and, and you know it didn't matter who was pulling the trigger. Allison Arns hits one here. J.C. Bradley had a bunch. Kira Duffy did her thing as well. I mean, it was just really good to see because some of the shooters on this team, uh, you know, we'll talk more, more about one of them here specifically yes. in just a little bit. Uh, you know, they haven't really been getting into the rhythm that we're so used to seeing with them. So last night, if this is any indication, that's great news. If they if they could shoot it that well, not just one or two players. But as a team from three, that's going to be a great sign for this team. And it's certainly going to help their case uh, as they move forward through the Summit League. We know how difficult it can be. But if you're shooting it well from outside, you're going to put yourself in position to win a lot of games. And really far outside. I mean, we saw Allison Arns hitting it from nearly NBA range. But mm -hmm. one of the shooters that you hinted at, J.C. Bradley, she was top 10 in the nation last year for shooting the three-point shot. And kind of this year, to be honest, has been struggling a little bit, Jay. But last night, I think she was back on track. Yeah, she was almost perfect last night. In fact, the only miss she had, she was 89 in the game. The only miss she had was from inside the perimeter. She was <laughs> 5 of 5 from downtown in this game. And she hadn't hit more than three three-pointers in a game all season long. She was right around 40% for the year. Remember, she shot 45% last year. Not just one of the best in the Summit League, Kelly. Mm -hmm. One of the best in the entire country in terms of three-point shooting percentage, J.C. Bradley. And so she's specifically one of those players. If she gets going from downtown, look out. Because she's she's another one of those players that if, if you see that first one go in, which she did last night, yes. then all of a sudden the second one went in, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, you know, I mean, she gets hot and, and you can't contain her. And so this is an awfully good sign. She shot it pretty well the game before uh, as well against Denver on Saturday. So I think she's seven of her last 11 now from three point range. Great news for Don Plitzway and the Coyotes if J.C. Bradley can get into that rhythm that we got so used to seeing from her the last couple of years. Yeah, very exciting for her. She seems just automatic, like you said, after she sees that first one go in. But let's switch gears to the men's team okay. because USD is in action tonight against Western Illinois. And you look at the series between these two teams. Western Illinois last year barely making it into the Summit League tournament. USD mm -hmm. coming in with the number one seed. But you look at their games. The one in Vermillion last year, Ugly. Oh, yeah. Absolutely awful. Oh, yeah. USD comes out with the win. But then the Summit League tournament goes into overtime, a one seed and eight seed. Mm. I mean, what can you expect tonight? Not sp uh, Well, probably more of the same, to be <laughs> honest. I mean, last year, that game in Vermilion, Craig, Craig Smith talked about this on Saturday after the game against Denver. He mm -hmm. said that was a rock fight. 
It I mean, absolutely was. He said when you go against Western Illinois, you gotta you kinda gotta fall in love with the taste of your own blood because it's gonna oh, yeah. manage whoever's gonna take the shots and then get up and keep finding a way to come uh, back and, and make the plays down the stretch in those games. That's that's who's gonna come out with a win. And fortunately for South Dakota, they were able to do that mm -hmm. all three times they played Western Illinois last year, but it was it was a little too close because you're right, Western barely made the tournament and then very nearly pulled off one of those rare 1-8 upsets mm -hmm. in the first round, USD surviving in overtime. But this is a little bit different of a Western team that we've seen the last few years. Scoring is up about 76 and a half points per game. Uh, that's about fifth in the Summit League. The defense is always going to be there with the Leathernecks. They're second best yeah. in the league, 67 points allowed per game so far this year. They lead the league in field goal percentage. Of course, Brandon Gilbeck is a, is a huge force, literally seven feet <laughs> inside it. for this team. One of the best defensive players in the Summit League, but he's averaging around 13 points per game right now too. So mm -hmm. that part of his game seems to be evolving. So this is not a rollover game. USD, if they want to win this and go to 2-0 and and get, get into that situation where they're getting ready for North Dakota State on Saturday as a 2-0 and team, protecting the home floor is essential. They got to do it tonight and they got to play well. Yeah, Summit League, you have to take care of business every night. And I feel like it's like the Missouri Valley for football. It's like, yeah. oh, another team coming up. Doesn't matter where their ranking is. But speaking of, let's switch gears to football. But we are going to talk FBS football. Mm. The college football playoff and the semifinals were on Monday, starting with the Oklahoma Georgia oh, game. Man. I personally <laughs> was pulling for the Sooners. Baker Mayfield, big fan. But the first Rose Bowl game that goes in overtime the highest scoring Rose Bowl game I mean what do you think of it uh, it was fantastic television absolutely <laughs> by the way Carla Metz is super mad at you right now oh I know, I know. <laughs> so wherever you are Carla uh, you know oh the dogs gosh, you know the that. dogs deserved <laughs> the opportunity to go in there and, and get the win but seriously uh, you know a lot of people were pulling for for Baker Mayfield I think in this game he's just such a, a dynamic personality not to mention the Heisman Trophy winner mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to see what he would do if he got into the title game plus I think you know he's just a character yes. and, and I think you know there's so much personality love it or hate it he's certainly one of those polarizing sports figures that you either really like him or you really don't like him mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm kind of on the like side of things and that's not always the case with guys quite like him but I thought he played pretty well what I thought was interesting is is what has been talked about so much. Lincoln Riley kind of taking the ball out of his hands down mm -hmm. the stretch of that game. That was kind of interesting. And maybe maybe he got a guy down there in Oklahoma that's regretting some of those decisions he made yeah. down the stretch. You got a guy like Baker Mayfield, put the ball in his hands, <laughs> let him go play. But Georgia made the plays down the stretch. That defense was something else. Uh, really stepped up in, in, in crucial moments against a really talented offense, not to mention Mayfield. And, and so they deserved it, and it was good to see them run the football late because that's what made, makes them such a, a tough team to beat. They've got that uh, just a terrific one-two punch at running back. So to see them win the game that way, you know, it's kind of the ultimate opposite end of the spectrum from what Oklahoma did, taking the ball away from their big gun and Georgia, you know, riding the, riding the dog oh that God. got them there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. Well, sad for the Sooners. Um, happy for Carla Metz and her <laughs> Georgia Look at her backtrack. <laughs> but yeah. anyways, that is all for Water Cooler Talk today. We look forward to many more of these. It's going to be super fun. Be fun. All right. Well, next on the show, we'll send it back up to Grand Forks with Alex Heinert, who will get us all up to speed on North Dakota hockey. Stay right here. This is Midco Sports Tonight.